but I managed to produce this address. And uh, you will remember, on the 24th of May this year, I addressed a letter, it is all, open letter, delivered to the Inspector General of Pol uh, Police uh, to see that government policemen, public officers were not being used illegally in supporting Wiki and its men. Up to today, I've not had anything from him, and I still believe that he has not changed. That's why I said he should now arrest him with a with, uh, with, uh, warrant. And uh, because we can believe that the only person in this country today that's above him is Mr. President. He's free to insult anybody, to do whatever thing he likes. But if you go with a warrant of arrest, you will not be able to escape from it. Well, everything I wanted to say about the Inspector General Police has been said there. I'm calling on him, a very respected, intelligent officer. He has all the qualities to be one. To step out in the interest of this country. Not to, not to allow personal relationship to undermine the constitution of Nigeria, which Wiki has breached. And nobody is talking to him. Mr. President so took an oath to defend this constitution. But today, he's having himself alone, cannot breach the constitution of Nigeria because section one of the constitution is very clear on that. Every decision of the constitution binds everybody, every authority, including Mr. President. But for him today to run a blind eye and allow one of his ministers to make a mess of this country, today ministers that have been automatically removed by the constitution by, by, by moving to APC are still parading themselves as, as members of the House of Assembly. With the speaker acting, taking, taking uh, harassing the governor, taking him to all sorts of courts. Today, Wike is controlling all the judiciary. He does whatever he had one, one judge, more to show, who is giving him all the decision. But the situation is very clear. Section 109 of the Constitution is very clear. PDP is intact. PDP had its. Um, uh, held his uh, uh, neck meeting on the 18th of April. Wiki attended. Fulbright, Governor Fulbright attended. The, uh, the, the chairman of board of trustees attended. The acting chairman attended. So what, where, where is the breakage? The secretary attended. But today, Wiki is saying that they are still members. What have they done? They now said that the 27 members did not properly resign from PDP. Therefore, they were still members of the House. It is this case of retaining these people as members of PDP that they wrote a letter to the Court of Appeal counteracting the, the one written by the legal advisor of the party. What a deviant fellows. Wike is already dancing naked in the pub, in the marketplace with one leg in APC, with the other leg in PDP. But he had failed and will be consumed. Could you imagine? Wike recently insulted 
the members of the board of trustees, starting with the chairman, Senator Wambara, who was number three man in Nigeria during the passenger's time, was the president of the Senate. When Wicker was in school, uh, he was just doing some little jobs. He called him after the, uh, that com uh, uh, conference um, meeting. The chairman of the board of trustees, Wambara, stood up to make a speech at the next meeting that they should look into all cases of uh, infringement, people around the party. Five days after, Wambara received a letter written in red ink by, uh, by Wiki to him. And he said, Wambara, Haba, how would your late wife feel now that you're embarrassing yourself and that of your family? You are a disgrace to your generation. The Udiva State issues matter will consume you in writing. And I've already secreted. Recently again, I encouraged them to meet the governor in River State, and they, they did. About 12 of them, past governors, past senators, and so on. They were all there, and it was agreed that the board of trustees should try everything to bring, them to, uh, to bring the party together. Mwike said he will never attend any meeting of the board of trustees. They are barriers that they will, and so forth, abusing everybody. And some people are saying that, oh, there should be a reconciliation committee. To do what? To do what? So I thought, Wiki has gone beyond. He has something else about this structure. Whether his own structure is many, he stored in river said which he must protect. Or something else. Otherwise, as I properly explained by, uh, by Chief Ada George, he spoke to me that he was, as I, as I said in paper, that he was a member of uh, Okilo's government, the first civilian governor. When Okilo left, he became the governor and he inherited the structures. When uh, he left, I mean, uh, this uh, orderly was his deputy. He handed over them to him. But meanwhile, one in Bata came as I explained in my paper that we case should be taken as a chairman of Obia Local Government Council because he was working very hard as a judge and bail lawyer there, collecting rents. And he was made by Odili because he couldn't make it before the coup took place. Now, this same man was handed over, handed over the structures to Ameshi. Ameshi handed, uh, then Wike became Ameshi's uh, uh, chief of staff, uh, who took over the, 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 the structures. When Jonathan and his wife imposed Wike on our people as governor of River State. So he is saying now that he will, he will protect these the structures until he's dead. But he had earlier told us that the main reason for keeping the structures is because he wanted to give, uh, he wanted uh, President uh, Tinubu to win in 2027. If he's saying that he will choose the structures until he's dead, it means there's something more than that. That's why I'm calling on the police. 
Inspector General of Police to investigate. Nobody is above the law. Otherwise, Nigeria will soon be facing additional trouble. This, uh, the youth of those 13 states are not going to keep quiet and allow Wike to burn their states. And then once again, I'm calling all, all the people who says that Fubra is the leader of PDP in River State to come out. Those that, those that I mentioned, the secondos and others, who used to sit with the Wike, dine with him, eat with him, compromise every, 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 uh, every aspect of the state with him, to, to lead, come out, get people to follow the governor. Otherwise, it's not enough to, to say, who is Wike? So, I'm appealing to everybody in the River State, organizations, come out and stand by the governor. No, no violence, nothing. So, once again, thank you and God bless. Thank you. Politics. That's why I made the statement. But unfortunately, when I got back to Abuja, I held a press conference. And Punch, correspondent, asked me a question to assess the cor corruptibility of this government, of this president, starting with Abatonjo, which I did. I thought Abatonjo was now, it's true. He brought the FCC, he brought ICPC, but today he's one of the most corrupt presidents in this, in this world. I said so. I said, but for the Aradwa, man was sick, but he never wanted Ibori and others who, uh, who sponsored his election to be, to be perse uh, persecuted and uh, to be sent to court. But he did nothing. He was clean, man. As for Jonathan, nice man. But I do not think Jonathan had the political will to face this type of dangerous um, corrupt, corrupt practices in Nigeria now. And um, Mr. Benabati took it against me that I betrayed uh, Jonathan that uh, tomorrow I will call the Buhari my, my son. So I answered back, back, and the whole thing was settled. But I said in that meeting that anything affecting the interest of Nigeria, I will fight, whether I'm inside the party or not. Did I not say so? Yes. I said so. So my son, what I'm saying today is outside party politics it affects the people of River State, affects the people of Nigeria. And while I'm still alive, I must make my contribution to stop it. Because I fear only God, no human being. I respect people. This is our government. Whether we elected him or not, we elected him. And therefore, we must support. In supporting, we must be listened to. When Nigerians, nobody is a first class citizen and nobody is a second class citizen. So at my 97, I'm going to 98. I'll continue to talk. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you, Daddy. Yes. I think we're... That's a very good question. I've done my homework. I'm about 60 years at the bar, even though I'm not a son because of uh, I was doing government job. I was a brilliant lawyer. So I've done my homework. There are various laws of this country 
I've even got some uh, senior lawyers to help me who have now discovered that Winke has breached a number of Nigerian laws, public laws, and so on. He has committed crime. And for him to, uh, to call and uh, to, uh, to say that he will burn states belonging to PDP governors and so on. It's treasonable. It's treasonable. All of their totality, we can have committed treason. Is it your worry that committed treason but say, I call for revolution in Nigeria? Is that what you are saying? Where did he say it? In what ground? At what ground? What impact did he make? But here is a, a serving minister in the Federal Republic of Nigeria saying that he will burn the states of his colleagues, he will burn their hands and they won't sleep again in their houses, he will, he will, he will uh, do everything to, uh, to disorganize the governments of those states. Nobody, no governor, no minister can go to that extent. It's a breach of the constitution. So, he has committed a series of offenses. We will come out after some time. The picking ways they make my man not sleep, he not go sleep.